Oh my God. Okay. Reporting live, reporting live from the Stanley Moss. Hello. Thank you for having me. We just got out. Um, okay. So I'm giving you guys the very first um, updates. I haven't even posted on my story, but basically uh, it started um, today. Uh, the first thing I'm just going to go through my notes. The first thing it says is like, why does the media have computers and not us? Cause they're just like typing the whole time. Okay. But let's get to it. Basically, um, there was the petitioners, lawyers there, Loeb and Loeb, and then the court appointed lawyer, John Guy, and then two other lawyers there. Um, that was what um, Mr. Amon wanted the, the two other lawyers to represent him instead of John Guy. Um, so that was the very first like matter was like, OK, well, who is actually going to represent Mr. Amon? And um, John Guy actually spoke up and said that there is a conflict of interest for him to represent Mr. Almond. What is and it? Did he say or he just said it was a conflict? He said there he said he has different. John Guy has different opinions. And then I wrote, I have a conflict of interest to represent Mr. Almond. And then the judge was like, oh, OK, I won't inquire about that at this moment. And then she asked Mr. Amin who he wanted to represent him, in which he said, I believe the lawyers were Cajun Miles. I, I don't know, like the spelling of it, so I could be pronouncing that wrong. Yeah, they actually but filed two uh, things yesterday, one today. And yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. So so there were two lawyers there. One guy, his name was Rummer and the other guy's name was Levy, I think, or Letty. Yeah. Yeah, from, I think that's yeah, right. Then, uh, Avi Levy. That that checks out. Levy and Rummer. He said it was like drummer, but Rummer, I believe. Um, and okay. they spoke up and they agreed to represent him. Um, and then the judge said that it was mandatory to accept um, Elijah's lawyer, and she discharged John Guy. Um, yeah. Then, okay, but then that begs the question: Why didn't Reva Gates do that with? Adam Streisand and Brittany back in 2008 if they were killed by know. law. I was wondering, it could be because there's more eyes on the, the court right now because of all of the work that you've done and Free Brittany movement has done. You know, I thought it was suspicious that Brenda Penny was no longer a judge on the case. I know she's passed off Brittany's case to Luna, to the Discovery referee. So I was thinking they might be scared of the activism that, you know, you've been doing and other They activists. could be, but also like in my case in Stanley Mosque, it got passed off to like four different judges. Now that was in technically family court kind of, but like there were like, I think four total different judges on my case for that restraining order attempt. So maybe it's normal so or maybe, maybe they like don't want the heat. It seems like John Guy has no interest maybe in the coverage. Maybe it's common with Brenda. Like I can't help but think like she just doesn't want any smoke from the press. I remember asking Matt Rosengard about if she was permanently gone. And he had told me like, yeah, that is a good question. She did leave abruptly. And like to me, that was kind of like code for it was weird that she passed it on. So now she passed this case on to this new judge. Um, and so, you know, I wasn't sure if it was because of the press and she doesn't want a, any public cases. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's but fine I, because guess what? Transparency is going to happen on all these cases. So if you can't handle the transparency, heat, get out the transparency kitchen. So basically after they discharged John Guy, the petitioners, the lawyers on behalf of the petitioner, which is Cher, um, was saying, um, tried to like dispute the discharge of John Guy and them having their own lawyers essentially and said that we're not sure that Amon has capacity. And right. the judge, you know, just disagreed and, and then went on to discharge John Guy. Good. Um, and then he, he, she said to John Guy, okay, you can leave unless you have requests. And he said that he will submit requests. Wait, yeah. request for what? I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. It was just like, you know, she was like, okay, John Guy, you can be just discharged now. You're welcome to stay unless you, she's like, you can leave unless you have requests. And then he said, I'll submit requests. So I don't know necessarily what that means. And maybe it's like a request to like be removed from the case based on a conflict. I don't know. We'll see maybe what gets filed. Maybe to make it a, an official request. Like, I, yeah, I guess so. 
Um, I was then, nervous about that because obviously you wouldn't have been able to see it, but there was something filed like moment, like 8.30 this morning, y'all's time, and which is like literally the time that that notice hearing was supposed to be. And in it, um, maybe or maybe it was filed yesterday. We read two documents that were actually filed by, uh, what's his name, Elijah and his chosen lawyers. And I thought it was very interesting. His court appointed lawyer didn't file nothing in his favor. And he had said, Elijah said in his filings, he said, I've asked for this confidential information that was filed confidentially from my court appointed attorney. He did not send it to me and I haven't even seen it. So how am I going to represent, how am I going to argue about this good cause and all of this when I'm not, and I was like all worked up. I was like, this is Brittany 2.0. They're going to F it up. They're going to mess it up. And um, you're, that was brought up in court and the judge agreed with him and said that she had read the objection. And then she kind of, when, when the petitioner lawyers were like, you know, kind of like clapping back. Like the judge was like, I'm not convinced. Oh, because basically what happened, oh my God, this is so extra. Like they were like, they tried to say, wait, I'm gonna just go through my notes. So they go, okay, the ex parte. So she says she reviewed the objection that you're talking about. Um, and then she said, she basically sides with Elijah and she said, uh, I agree that the potential conservatee is entitled to read it all. And it did not appear that he had access. And it was less than 24 hours is like not enough time, basically. Um, and then she said, let's see what I have here. Then they, they said they would, the continued temporary conser conservatorship petition would be in March. Um, and then basically oh and then so then the, the lawyers uh for a petitioner for share stood up and the judge was like you can stay seated and she still stands she's like oh i'm just i it's just a habit like i don't know but is it the blonde the one or the other that, one kind of see like who's not like who they're leaning towards so you know i found that interesting and then um she says uh oh so then they say they bring up the trust and they're like oh no well you know, we need potential, like we need a temporary conservatorship because um, the distribution will, will be made and it's a life and death decision, like whether or not, like basically saying that, you know, the distribution of the trust will be made. So they're trying to like say, oh, and it's $30,000. Like to them, I don't think that's a life or death decision because Elijah said in his filings that these distributions happen quarterly. So it's $120,000 in distributions per year divided by four is $30,000. I don't think he's about to be getting $1.2 million. Like 30,000 for these people is nothing. They don't, their cars cost more than that. Their watch yeah. probably cost more than it that. Just, yeah, like they just seemed like, oh, it's so urgent. Like there's gonna be a trust distribution. And so we really need to get him into a temporary conservatorship even if it's a shorter one than the March hearing, like they're pushing for it. And then um, she's like, we need to receive the money in order to safeguard Mr. Allman. Like, and, and then they're like, um, yeah, they're just saying that there were reasons in the confidential reporting um, as to why they need to protect Mr. Allman. And then the judge was like, I'm not persuaded. So we don't know what's in those confidential filings, but they didn't persuade the judge. They did not persuade the judge. The judge was like, no, you guys had your chance. She said, Mr. Allman reached out to you to pro wanting the info yesterday and you didn't provide it. So I'm not persuaded. Um, and she said, you had the opportunity to give him 24 hours of notice and you didn't take it. So I'm not persuaded. She said it multiple times. Um, and then they did said that they say had it like out. that. Like, was she a little bit like, Yes. Or was it like professional? No, it felt very like, you don't have to stand and I'm not persuaded. I'm not persuaded. I am not persuaded. Like it felt Good. like, yeah, it did feel like that. Um, and then basically they were like trying to say that they, oh, they reached out to John Guy and she was like, yeah, thank you for that info, but I'm not persuaded. And then they, they said January 29th, they're going to have another hearing after they've given um, Mr. Almond's, you know, um, Council enough time to review, I guess, the you know, that information. That and that's gonna be the hearing on temporary conservatorship. I I pr probably because that's what this one was for, right? So it yes. it seems like a continuation, like, oh, he didn't have enough time to read it. 
um, that was your guys's fault. So we're going to give him time and we're going to accept his counsel. And so then the next one is January 29th. And then, you know, they were a little concerned with the timeline, but that is the timeline that the judge um, decided upon. And then they need to file, they need to say, um, they need to say Mr. Almond's position ahead of time of a week prior. So they have to file and serve his position on January 22nd. And that's about six hundred. And what, like, what does that mean? Like they, he has to file like his objection to it or? Probably like, I, I guess it meant like, okay, well, you guys didn't give him enough time to review the confidential information. Um, so we're going to give him to January 29th. And I would like to know your position ahead of time because I want to read it ahead of time. So get your position in. I, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, assuming that means uh, their response to those confidential filings that, that they did not allow Mr. Almond to see yesterday. Um, so it sounds to me like everything actually went in his favor today. I mean, yes. it is still annoying because he has to pay these lawyers and all that. But two big red flags we saw in Brittany's case was number one, she was determined and deemed not to be able to retain counsel, even though despite the fact she had in fact, indeed obtained count, retained counsel. I was nervous and I was, I was, my heart was beating fast earlier about it. Thinking like, are they going to do this to him? Because there's these emails um, attached to the two things that he did file. His lawyers did file. And these emails are coming from these snot nosed ass Loeb and Loeb attorneys talking about, um, a, a, a court appointed counsel cannot be replaced based on a substitution of attorney. So he's the attorney on the case and we're going to treat it as that. Like basically like who the f are you even? They who had that attitude you? in court today too. Like the way that they were talking and, but it like snotty. Like the judge was siding with, with Mr. Almond in the case. So I, you know, so far, so hoping to see that type of support. I will say I went up to him after Court and asked him if he had any comment. I told him that like, oh, I, I represent the public. I'm with Free Britney, Justice for Britney to end conservatorship abuse. Like, do you have any comment? And it really seemed like he wanted to say something. By the way, he looks so like competent and like normal and like nothing, no reason why, like they're saying, oh, he's incapable of hiring a lawyer. Why? He showed up with two. How is that? Just and they filed stuff in the capable. case, which is more competent than the lawyer that he does have forced upon him who filed nothing. And he, yeah. the lawyer they forced on him didn't even file a court appointed counsel report. And what he was the conflict of interest email. of this John guy? What does that mean? Conflict of interest? That was sketchy. I feel like I do too, but I also feel like I don't even care. Just right. leave, just get off the right. case. I'm so right. glad that happened like that. And it could be because he didn't want the heat. It could be because it would be more trouble than it's worth. And it also could be because we're talking about chump change. To these people, 120000 is nothing. Britney right. Spears' estate was worth in the tens to hundreds of millions at the time they took it over. And there's all kind of famous people in these conservatorships, very wealthy people who are not famous. And so these court-appointed counsels, they don't, that, that's basically working for free. That 120 is going to run out so fast each year. Maybe it's that. I could see that being the case. And, you know, basically it did seem like, you know, he was there with his sister today. Uh, she was there as well. And um, one other person who I, I wasn't sure if it was his wife or I think someone said it was, um, uh, let me see, I wrote it down. It, that it was Kelly. Someone said, I don't know all of the, people still i'm still learning the case so his but wife's I, name is um mary angela but it's like all one word so yeah, i don't know if it's like she was there because i okay. i watched her music thing from what you posted this morning she when she first walked in she gave us like a nod you know and and then and then you know after i had asked elijah like um you know if he had anything it seemed like he wanted to say something but then the lawyer was like no comment you know what i mean and like when it which totally, whatever, what I told them, you know, that we support you and your freedom, you know, and, and, um, and then, uh, she, the, the sister then too was like, thank you. Like, took, you know, I was like, good. Yeah, and you know, know I'm glad watching. that a sister showed up because as you know, uh, the brother Chaz Bono on, you know, a different dad, but still brother had filed a, um, a declaration 
saying that he supported the conservatorship attempt and he supported Cher being the conservator. Oh, wow. As Bono. Yes. Yes, he did. And so I'm glad there's another sibling there on the other yes. side saying, um, excuse me. No, somebody yeah. had um, commented GS had commented and, and I want to get your input on it. I, I lost the comment, but um, he had said, do you think like he looks so competent and all that? Like you said, do you think that Cher was hoping and banking on the fact that Elijah would still be maybe perhaps not able to come to court today, like perhaps in Mexico thought. or elsewhere. That's what I thought. Cause wasn't he like, and then they're like, Oh, we can't locate. Wasn't there a thing about them not being able to locate him? Like, it's almost like they thought he wasn't going to show up, but he showed up wearing a suit, looked great. Looks just like his father, Aww. like very competent, looked very sweet. Honestly. Like when I went up to him, he, looked at me right in the eyes, like was very like, he looked like he wanted to say something, you know, but whatever is best for him, if his lawyers, you know, said is instructed not to comment, don't comment. We, I just wanted to at least let him know that like, you know, we're here to support his freedom. Um, and I, I do think they got that message. So. Well, I really appreciate uh, the updates and um, was Cher there in court? No, Cher was not there in court. Just um, her lawyers were there. The okay, bill. well, it's good. I'm very glad that we actually saw Elijah Blue, or you actually saw him in the flesh in real life, and he was actually there. Um, I'm happy about that for a lot of reasons, but I think it is another problem in these cases. Like, I was talking about it right before you came on, how they'll lock people up in... 5150s and drug them and not allow, allow them out by force of the like you cannot leave you're literally in prison and then they'll just have these hearings right behind your back your daddy and your mom and everybody who has financial interest in your estate gets to talk shit about you you don't even know what's going on you didn't get noticed you didn't see right. the paperwork and it's like even with the britney stuff like we've talked about this like offline before i'm not 100 percent convinced like half the time like britney was involved in any of this and we never saw her in court the judges were making these life decisions for her never laying eyes on her and it's like i thought it would be more of the same with this today i mean amanda bonds was wasn't up. at her hearing that was not even in the same county and that was brought up in britney's hearing as well like her lawyer argued that when they were trying to depose her that why should britney be deposed she wasn't even filled in on most of this information so you know our suspicions obviously were correct with Brittany you know being left out of the loop of her own legal case and it seems like that was what their plan was with Elijah considering they didn't oh it's so urgent oh please grant him this temporary conservatorship we have to stop this trust distribution but then ignore him yesterday when he's trying it to also does to me, it actually does give a lot of credibility to his competence that he has made all these maneuvers in the last week. Did you know that he also withdrew his divorce petition that's been ongoing for two years? Oh, I did see that. Yeah. like he's Because Cher was, Cher was trying to say, well, he's in the middle of divorce proceeding and that gives me priority to be his conservator. And then it wasn't two days after that was filed. That divorce petition was withdrawn. And he's like, nope, not anymore. It's my wife now. She has priority. Like, hold on. You mean to tell me that person ain't competent and they just maneuvered right. the legal system right around your 77-year-old right. ass? Girl, sit down. Maybe right. Cher's the one who needs the capacity declaration. Yeah, it's it's it feels like gaslighting when they're coming in there saying, oh, he doesn't have the capacity to hire his own lawyer when he has two lawyers beside him that he already, you know, hired if it's approved you know what i'm saying it's like well the, he's doing it right now what do you mean he doesn't have the capacity here he did it here he got it approved now by a judge literally exactly what i was saying earlier someone says i'm sorry good point but if a parent is truly concerned about their kids well-being they should show up no matter how big of a celebrity how are you not right? going to show up to the hearing you care about them so much yeah, it's just giving like the way that they went after the like, oh, we have to get this trust like after like it, it just feels like a money grab, you know. And did they bring up the conservatorship of the person at all? Because that was one thing in the probate notes where it's like, is a conservatorship of the person necessary? Should we go to care court? They didn't mention the conservatorship of the person from, you know, what I had heard. It seemed like, OK, the first order was about you know the like him having his own lawyers 
And then after that, they were just mainly concerned for this trust distribution. And this is another point. Thank you, Silly Pony. So I didn't know this. Actually, Silly Pony brought it to my attention. The trust in question is established in the state of Georgia. And so I'm not, a, I am not an expert in trust. It's one of the most difficult things on the bar exam. It's very hard to understand it. Only a few members of the elite cult know how the shit works and that you have to take extra classes and stuff sometimes. But all that being said, all that being said, um, sorry, my shit was vibrating. I think that means, and Silly Pony brought this up and I agree. I think that means what in the hell jurisdiction does this court have over that trust? Because she's not trying to get conservatorship of the person and his person is in California. He lives right. there, I guess. She's trying to get a court to order whether or not he can spend money from a trust. But the trust is administered out of Georgia. So why why'd she go through the Stanley Moss traffic? I mean, courthouse. Right. I know. And I can't help but, you know, be like red flag that to have Brenda on the case. Like, you know, we've seen with Lou Taylor emails that they do try to hand select these judges, you know, and, you know, I, you know, I can't say that didn't cross my mind when I saw Brenda Penny initially. So it is confusing why they would go through Stanley Mosque. I don't understand it, you know, but I'm just glad that the judge seemed to side with Elijah today. And I hope that she keeps that up. So from what it sounds like to me, it's going to be an uphill battle for them to get even a permanent conservatorship when the time comes for that argument. I mean, did you get the same impression or it I mean, this is just us speculating. We don't know. We can't tell the future. I know, of course, I'm totally speculating and I am new on the case, but just based on like being in the room and like gauging people's, you know, like demeanors, you know, it, I, and I, obviously it's a win that he has his own lawyers, you know, so that yes. feels like, yes, it's going to be more of an uphill battle for them. And I'm just like kind of hoping that the judge kind of throws this out, you know, and maybe there's no like uphill battle. What do you think would, is like the likelihood of like the judge being like, you know, like, no, he seems like to have his capacity, you know, to manage this trust. I mean, it's hard to say because in the cases that I have followed, um, I've never seen a judge even make that determination. I always have seen it after the fact the judge already done granted it. And so, I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to do it. I think with this real, um, not real lawyer, but like this, yeah, someone bit, without a conflict of interest who's like actually hired by the. You it's know. hard too, though, because like let's say that the the conservatorship was granted, like these lawyers, I guess, would also still have conflicts of interest because they would still be getting paid out of the estate to represent him. But it seems to me like these lawyers are trying to make their reputation of "I'll help you not get put in a conservatorship," which is their interest, right? Their interest is to win, um, and which means their interest is disaligned with conservatorship. Whereas if this other lawyer would have been appointed like Sam Ingham was, he could have become a millionaire. Who knows? Who knows how right, long this right. could have gone? And then once you have that first foothold in, it's like, oh, here's this other trust. Here's another trust. Here's another asset we just found. We didn't even know he owns all these property or whatever. Right. Um, but I've, I've, I'm, I'm hoping that this is like a turning over of a new leaf for Stanley Moss Courthouse and they're realizing over there like actually no y'all we can't just be okay somebody was addicted to drugs one time like we're gonna take all their rights no we can't be doing that no more out of this that. that's it that's wild and I agree and I'm I'm you know hopeful that like our attention on this matter does affect the judges here at Stanley Moss like maybe it is just like an average thing that the judges pass things on to other judges like you experienced in your case or maybe they are shaken you know, and like, you know, maybe, maybe our activism, like, did do something, even though we're constantly seeing more attempts to conserve people. And, you know, in that, in that hearing alone, there was multiple cases before Elijah's case of, um, you know, just like regular people and minors who were going through their guardianship and conservatorship cases. And, you know, it, we obviously don't know the details of that, but it's very upsetting to hear. And they don't have the same press coverage as Elijah Almond and, you know, Britney Spears, Bam Margera. It's true. And at the time that the case was going on, there weren't people who were, I mean, I, I don't even know if you could even log in and electronically get a document in Britney's case. It's right. like, it's almost like it's kind of difficult to project 
how accessible things will be in the future or who's going to come along, who's just not going to let up or what group of people might come along who will never give up. And Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that if the Britney, you know, team con would have known what was down the road that they would have done it the same way. I think they would have found somebody to get a capacity declaration at least. I think they wouldn't have clicked a box about dementia at least. I don't think they anticipated anybody was ever going to even see that they said Britney Spears had dementia. I feel that same way. And And I feel feel that way about these confidential forms because I actually, those forms, there was this 31 page document this morning that was available for purchase. And I, in fact, did purchase it. And it was like labeled confidential uh, something, something, I don't know, information, whatever. It was 31 pages and I bought it. It was $15 something cents. And then when I tried to open it, it was like, you don't have permission. I kept, I bought it like three times just because I was like, what is this? Because if it truly is confidential, it wouldn't be available to me. So it's like attorneys just be calling stuff confidential to try and make you not click it or whatever. But if it's available to me, it has been deemed and determined not confidential. So wow. I kept trying to open it, kept trying to open it, just never would. So I emailed them. And they were like, um, okay, yes, here's your document. And I'm like, yes, I open it. It's this two page long thing from some other case having nothing to do with this. I was like, that ain't what I bought. That's not, that's no. So I sent back all my receipts and they're like, actually we've determined you um, are entitled to a refund. So we're going to be refunding your, so I don't know what, what's going on. Maybe it was a glitch. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be able to buy it, but I did buy it. And so I don't know. I'm almost wondering, just they they gave Elijah some pushback. This is one of the things that we read in the documents is Elijah hired his lawyers. And then he was saying one of the reasons why he needs more time is because he never even saw, as you know, those confidential forms. But he said in his documents, and this is probably what the judge was so aggravated about. He said in the documents, well, first of all, your honor, my lawyers that I chose, they reached out to shares, my mom's the proposed whatever, da, 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 lawyers. And asked for the documents and they refused to give her the, to give my lawyers the documents, exhibit A. Then he says, um, some other way, there was like two ways he reached out. And then he says, and I reached out to my court appointed counsel. I reached out to my court appointed counsel, John Guy, and asked him for the documents. And, uh, he has not responded to me. And so it was like, nobody was sending him what these confidential documents were. And I wonder if they ever even thought he was going to see him. Or to even catch them or to like, you know what I mean? Like, and he did. And, and that objection worked. I mean, it could have, if he was in Mexico right now and in an exo, he could have easily been, Oh yeah. A guy, whatever his name is, is like, Oh, we don't know where he is. It does seem like his wife helped a lot. And on Christmas Eve, she posted um, a Christmas Eve post with a Christmas tree. And she said, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who helped me get Elijah back into the country safely. And she said it took two countries. It took two two different countries working together and a bunch of team, a team of people, whatever, whatever. That was on Christmas Eve. But then in his filings, he said... His mom has known that he was in Mexico before December 15th. So I think Elijah, and you can go and watch the first part of this live um, if you, if you care, if you want to or whatever, but if you're interested, um, because it was going on like while you were in there and, um, and I said it in there, I was like, wait a second. Like, I guess if he was in um, Mexico and like, he wasn't supposed to be getting out, like actually would have been pretty easy to conserve him. Cause it's like, we don't know where he is. He's in strung out on drugs. The last time I saw him, it was right. drugs. But then there's all these allegations that Cher's been having him kidnapped. It's, I don't know. It's giving like weird, like cult gang stock. Like I think something else is going on here and we're on the verge of, you know, a little bit deeper of a dark trench than just some silly little trust conservatorship. I, I could feel that. Like I will say, obviously total speculation, just going off my intuition that when I looked into his eyes and we were having those moments of like me asking him, you know, to, to comment, like he seemed so concerned, you know, like it seemed like he wanted to say something like he was so like, he looked so concerned. Did it seem like maybe afraid, like fearful or? 
a little scared. I, I don't know. I could be, you know, misreading, you know, sure. it was a short amount of time when we had that interaction, Yeah. you know, but that is, yeah, it did seem, it did. But I, you know, we had that win, you know, just now with him, with, but that doesn't mean anything if you're fighting against, you know, these like, and, you know, sh with shares resources as well. It's very scary, you know, and, and her so resources yes, include a better reputation in the media than him and uh, institutional access to create whatever story about him she wants right. to create, in particular, if he's locked up out of the country. Right. And that's why it like it does like I, you know, started on here being like, oh, the first part of my notes is like that these that the media like they're allowed to get in there earlier than us. They take up the good seats. I have to lean forward so I could try to hear over their typing because their typing is so loud because they're allowed to have their laptops. They're sending text messages in there typing. And then us, the public, have to turn off our phones and get, you know, risk getting kicked out if we communicate at all. But they could just text each it's other. It's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional to treat we the people in a different way than the institutional media, that period. And someone's going to stew the shit out of Stanley Moss Courthouse one day and win. And I hope it's a class action because I'll happily join. I have had to get at that courthouse, as you know, at three o'clock in the morning sometimes to hope and pray that I can literally run into the courthouse when it finally opens at, you know, 830 or whatever in order to get one of 10 seats. Then when you get inside the courtroom, all the seats aren't even taken up. They just arbitrarily decide exactly. that only 10 people of we the people in the most highly anticipated tr trial probably of the year. It's obscene asinine, absolutely lacking in transparency. They didn't do overflow rooms, nothing. It's bullshit. And I think they should be sued. And I think they should have to return money to we the people, to the taxpayers for what they've done, the, the abuses they've done in that courthouse. And it makes it even worse because they're trafficking people. I know. I know. And it's like you, the, what you said is so spot on. Like, you know, they're like, oh, you can sit behind the media. When we get in there, there's so many empty benches in front of me with the media. And it's like, and there it's, it's just, I don't understand why they would let the media have their computers be able to. I do because Cher controls the media. Yeah, I know. And they're going to be is. saying what Cher wants them to say. Next Same time thing you want to interview some of the media. You should ought to interview them. That's say, so what, what smart. Here, I wish I did that. Today? The only ones I recognize are like the TMZ because I'm used to them with Bernie's case. But there was a lot of media there. So let me look. Well, I won't hold. I won't take you any longer. I know you have to get to the Britney case too. Yeah, Britney yeah. Spears has a, a hearing today. Same courthouse. Um, are you going to be talking about it on your channel anytime soon? Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'll probably post some updates on my Instagram. Like I always do, but I'm going to go live and talk more in depth tonight from my YouTube channel. I'm a new YouTuber, so I got to get comfortable on the live, but I will go on there and talk about what happens in Brittany's case today and what's happened previously. And like, you know, I want to also kind of cover more of Elijah's case and go through your videos on there as well. Okay, well, it's already linked in the description box, and I'm sure you're going to be giving. I mean, you did give a lot of details, more than I even expected. I really appreciate I gave you it. everything, BJ. You've done so much for this case, and I really caught up on Elijah Almond's case by listening to your videos. So I was like, you know what? Like, let's just give it all to BJ. You have the audience. This is really about getting the message out there, you know, and you've done so much of the legwork for that. So, of course, I'm just going to be transparent that's everything that I had in my notebook about the case then you know we, we could always dive into there's always more to dive into with these cases so and I'm I'll, sure I'll there will be there. more things you'll kind of put, put together piece together I know you literally like rant you haven't even posted on your own Instagram like you said I do have your YouTube channel linked below um everybody do give Melanie a follow bubblegum bite is her YouTube name let's get her to a thousand subscribers like maybe this week why not please yeah, thank you I appreciate you and I'm so inspired by you and the work that you've done to even start that channel. And um, yeah, all of us together, this community, like it really does make such a powerful difference. I really feel like, you know, as you said, we've never seen the judge kind of like side in that way to give someone that lawyer. And like, I really do believe it's because of the work that you've done, that advocates have done, that we've all done together. 
for the justice for Brittany movement and Brittany speaking out herself that we've been able to like see these changes. So we just got to keep eyes on them and keep showing up and let them know that we're watching. And it's not just press, it's it's the public as well. So we I the people want to know what's going on in these institutions. We want to know how people's fundamental liberties are being treated or mistreated. And I'm so thankful that you were there, kind of boots on the ground. Everyone go follow Melanie. I'm going to let you go. Post I on your own you. Instagram. Take a break. Take a sip of water. Get your it bearings will. about you. And you'll be covering Brittany either maybe today, maybe later this week or whatever. Yes. You'll be going yes. live. Follow on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Melanie Veronica. It's the same as, like, my name. I put the, the O is a zero. That's me on Instagram. I have, like, all of my highlight reels from like every single Britney Spears hearing the last like couple of years. So you guys, if you guys want to go and check that out and I'll be kind of relaying a lot of that information on the YouTube as time goes on. So thank you we so some much. People in the chat saying they're subscribing right I now. So thank you good. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, I will certainly be tuning in for your Britney coverage and also the rest of your coverage on this. You're pretty much caught up, I think now. So, well, after you watch this morning's live, maybe or after yeah, you read watch, the new one. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch. The, I'll okay. Watch well, the thank you stuff. so much. And I will talk to you very soon. Thank you. I really appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I love you. Love guys. you a minute. Bye. Bye.